The history of the atomic theory is a fascinating journey that spans over two millennia. It involves the contributions of numerous scientists and philosophers who sought to understand the fundamental building blocks of matter. Throughout history, the atomic theory has evolved and deepened our understanding of matter and its fundamental properties. It has played a central role in the development of modern chemistry and physics, with applications in various scientific and technological fields. Although we know an atom as a particle that is made up of various subatomic particles like the proton, neutron and electron, this was not known for over 2,000 years when Democritus, the ancient Greek philosopher, first defined an atom as an indivisible particle around the year 400 BC. It was not until 1808 that the English scientist John Dalton came up with what we now know as the modern atomic theory. The concept of the atomic theory dates back to ancient Greece, with philosophers like Leucippus and his student Democritus proposing that matter is composed of indivisible particles called atomos, meaning indivisible in Greek, around the 5th century BC. Democritus believed that atoms were too small to be seen. However, their ideas were philosophical and lacked empirical evidence. Aristotle, a prominent philosopher of the time, rejected the atomic theory in favor of his own ideas, which dominated scientific thought for centuries. Aristotle believed in the continuous and infinitely divisible nature of matter. Aristotle postulated that all matter was made of only four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. Unfortunately, the atomic ideas of Democritus had no lasting effects on other Greek philosophers, including Aristotle. In fact, Aristotle dismissed the atomic idea as worthless. Asian Greeks considered Aristotle's opinions as very important, and if Aristotle thought the atomic idea had no merit, then most of these Greeks thought the same as well. During the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, scientists pursued various goals, including the transmutation of base metals into gold and the discovery of the Philosopher's Stone. This was known as alchemy. These pursuits contributed to early chemical knowledge but were often shrouded in mysticism and superstition. However, philosophers are not scientists, nor do they test their ideas. Instead, they use reasoning to back up their beliefs. To them, human reasoning was superior to experimentation. Democritus created the first atomic model, a round sphere with no electrons, protons or neutrons. His contribution helped people understand the idea of an atom and helped other scientists further look into the science of the atom and its generic makeup. Due to a lack of evidence and experiments, their views on what atoms look like and how they behave were incorrect. Its actual existence was not established until the 19th century when the idea was accepted and refined by scientists. So, for the next 2000 years, the world depended on the theories of Democritus and Aristotle until the year 1808 when John Dalton came up with the modern atomic theory. John Dalton, an English chemist, put forward a theory to describe the nature of the atom. The atom is now considered to be the basic unit of simple substances or elements. He was a school teacher who performed many experiments on atoms. His atomic theory had five statements. 1. Atoms are tiny indivisible particles. 2. 
atoms can neither be created nor destroyed. 3. Atoms of one element are all the same. 4. Atoms of different elements are different. And 5. Compounds form by combining atoms. The really awesome thing about Dalton's model of the atom is that he came up with it without ever seeing the atom. He had no concept of protons, neutrons, or electrons. His model was created solely on experiments that were microscopic or seen with the unaided eye. Although the two theories that proposed atoms could not be divided were not true, John Dalton added significantly to the development of the atomic theory and would greatly influence J.J. Thompson in his own. Joseph John Thompson, the son of an English bookseller, had wanted to be an engineer and was already admitted to college at an unusually young age of 14 to study engineering. But in 1873, his father died, and due to lack of funds, he changed his major to physics. In 1897, as Cavendish Professor of Physics at Cambridge, Thompson discovered the electron which he had originally named as corpuscle. He was also the first scientist to show that the atom is made of other smaller particles and ended up contributing to more than the atomic theory. He helped to indirectly create the television and the computer. Using his research on cathode ray tube technology, Thompson showed that when a potential difference of 5,000 volts was applied across a glass tube containing a gas at a very low pressure of about 0.001 atmospheric pressure, the tube began to glow. When the potential difference was increased to 15,000 volts, a bright green glow appeared on the glass. Thompson was able to prove that the glow was due to some kind of rays which traveled in straight lines from the cathode. He called these rays cathode rays, which showed that they are composed of only negatively charged particles, which he called electrons, because they were attracted by the positive plate of the tube and repelled by the negative plate of the same tube. Hundreds of years earlier, Dalton had proposed that atoms were neutral solid spheres, but Thomson's experiment disproved Dalton's theory. In 1898, Thomson proposed his model of the atom, which advocated that electrons and protons were haphazardly placed all through the atom. He called the theory the plum pudding theory. This theory was not accurate, but subsequently led to the discovery of the nucleus made by Ernest Rutherford. Ernest Rutherford, a New Zealander, was the second of 11 children born to his parents. After college, he traveled to England to work as a researcher at the University of Manchester. He was a student of J.J. Thompson. In 1911, Rutherford, along with Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden, conducted the Gold Fall experiment using Thompson's model as a reference. In order to find out what is inside an atom, they used positively charged particles called alpha particles from a radioactive source to bombard the atom, a thin gold foil. They found out that most of the alpha particles followed a straight path through the gold foil. Some of them were scattered through wide angles, while a few were even scattered in the backward direction. Studying the experimental results, Rutherford proposed a nuclear theory of the atom, which states that the atom consists of a positive core called the nucleus, where most of the mass of the atom is contained, and electrons move around the nucleus. In 
In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed his theory of the atom using the quantum theory. Agreeing with Rutherford's model of the atom, he suggested that electrons are arranged in up to seven specific energy levels and that each spectral line is caused by an electron. Bohr postulated that circular orbits of the electrons were quantized, that is, orbiting of electrons at certain specific energy levels within the atom. Bohr determined that different energy levels could be found by using mathematical formulas which measure the wavelengths of the different energy levels. He also went on to suggest that electrons would only occupy the lowest possible energy level on the respective level they were on. Moreover, electrons would only move up a level, that is, increasing energy, if the lower levels were full. Bohr's model was not entirely correct, but it would lead to Schrödinger's idea of the modern atomic model. In 1926, Erwin Schrödinger introduced the wave mechanics model which describes the behavior of the tiny particles that make up matter in terms of waves. Schrödinger formulated the Schrödinger wave equation to describe the behavior of electrons, tiny, negatively charged particles in atoms. He developed the equation which is used today to understand atoms and molecules. The complex mathematics behind Schrodinger's wave equation makes it extremely difficult to solve for any system more complicated than a hydrogen atom, which has only one proton and one electron. In 1932, James Chadwick, a student of Rutherford, discovered a subparticle of an atom called the neutron through the bombardment of a thin sheet of beryllium with alpha particles. The neutron carried no charge and its discovery indicated that the atomic nucleus was made up of protons and neutrons. It also explained the existence of isotopes of an element. Further experiments pertaining to the atomic theory are still being carried out by scientists with the hope of new ideas, theories, and pieces of evidence being introduced. The scientific world is looking forward to seeing more scientists unravel more mysteries concerning the model of the atom and subsequently the modern atomic theory. The atom is made up of three main subparticles, electrons, protons, and neutrons with positive, negative, and zero charges respectively. An atom consists of a positively charged core called the nucleus, where most of the mass of the atom is contained and electrons move around the nucleus. When an electron is excited, it will jump from a level of lower energy to a level of higher energy. The wave mechanics model of the atom makes the electron elusive and indicates a region around the nucleus called an orbital. Other scientists who have contributed to the atomic theory include Antoine Lavoisier, Isaac Newton, Dmitry Mendeleev, William Röntgen, Robert Millikan, Henry Moshley, Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Werner Heisenberg, Louis de Broglie, Enrico Fermi, and Marie Curie. Who was Marie Curie? You can learn more about the scientist in our next episode.